Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Juliados and brought to you by his huge book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PED use, available on Amazon.com. And now all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome the good doctor, Dr. T. George Tuliados. How are you, sir? Good one. Uh, thanks. So let us know our, your impression from the New York Pro. It was in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, yeah. It hasn't been in, actually, it was in New York a couple of years ago, but uh, it's a nice venue. I like having everything under one roof. It's a big Marriott hotel with a ballroom, so you never have to leave the building. I like that. Uh, you know, didn't have a lot of big names in the show, but there was some really good talent. Uh, the guy that won, he's going to be phenomenal. Tony O'Burton, a little more size, and I, I can see him doing really well at the Olympia pretty soon. It was his first victory? Uh, he won the Legion Sports last year. He moved up from 212. Uh, he had been a 212 where he won, I think was the Indy Pro was his first win. Then he took some time off after the first year as 212, came back as an open guy, and now he's doing very well. He was beating, he beat some guys in this show that were like 270 pounds. I've and, seen the Grammy was there, uh, Breno Carey also. Yeah, yeah. Rami was uh, there. Samir Banut. Samir Banut. Yeah. Samir was there. You know, Rick Collins was there, but I never saw him. Yeah, I, saw, yeah. I never saw him once. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. But uh, it's a good crowd. And you Natalia know, was, a, was a guest poser? No, she won. She competed. Oh, she won? Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Well, I mean, she's qualified to say Miss Olivia, you know? She did the Pittsburgh the weekend before that, and she won that. Well, the Pittsburgh wasn't just a guest poser. No, know? she she, she, comp she competed in Pittsburgh. They had women's physique, and she won. Uh, what for? I mean, she's qualified for life. Well, I interviewed her before the show. I said, why are you doing all these? You know, you're the yeah. Olympia champion. Just do the Olympia. A lot of, she said, this is what I love. I love competing. I'm going to compete. and Stay you know, in shape all year round. That my peaking uh, so early. She never gets out of shape anyway. She's always lean. If you see, if you follow her, she's yeah. never more than, to me, it looks like six weeks out, eight weeks out. I believe Natalia could uh, compete at the uh, Miss Olympia also. You know what? I mean, I was I was covering the I mean, show. The, the legs are phenomenal. Women's physique and women's bodybuilding. Pretty close, huh? It's almost some some of them. Some of the women's physique women were bigger than some of the women in bodybuilding, and some of the you could have switched a few of the people and it wouldn't have even noticed. It's so close now, very close. Because there was the only uh, there's only one really huge bodybuilder woman that won the show, Natalia Kovaleva Kov from Czech Republic, living in Arizona. She was huge, but there was a few women in the women's bodybuilding. Do you know a Russian woman, Natalia Kuznetsova? Uh, they called her Amazonka. What's her real name? Well, do you know she's as big as a, as a regular guy? Oh, yeah. I mean, have, have, you, have you stood next to her? Huh? Have you met her in real life? Never, no. But, uh, I mean, everything is phenomenal. I mean, bigger arms than uh, physique guys. Yeah, and yeah. But she's not a pro. Is she pro? Yeah, she's a pro. She's a pro. She did, um, I think she's competed in that, uh, the Romania Muscle Fest show. I think she was. Uh, just in Europe, I know you in the U.S. No, I've never seen her here. That'd be great. She's, she's a big, Man, big. She's big bigger than uh, Vicky Gates. Than, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Linda Murray from, uh, from uh, Cizewski, Chris, Kim Cizewski, you know. Irish. She's bigger than, than them. Bigger than Irish. She's bigger than, I don't know. She looks tall, too. I don't know how yeah, tall she is. Yeah, but bigger than Irish Carly, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. She's probably, I bet she's 200 pounds on stage or more. <laughs> and I Russian. Guess she, uh, I guess Natalia could yeah. be, I don't know. What's her real but name? Natalia Kuznetsova. Uh, this is Irish. Russian. Well, it could be, could be a, a Czech Republic, too. Similar kind of names. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but good show. Good show. Uh, great turnout. Good crowd. Uh, man, while we were away. We only had like five questions last week, right? Hmm. Now we have like 12 or six this week because I think it's summer. Summer's How coming. many? 12? No, nah, it's one, two. Well, you didn't tell me to get rid of any. So we have four, five, six, seven. Oh, we do. Eight, nine, 10, 11. It's exactly 12. And I was just guessing. It's wow. a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, you never know, man. One, one week to another. It changes so much. So let's get to it, doctor. Uh, yeah. First question is about Proviron. Can Proviron be run longer term? without it negatively affecting lipids like the other DHT-derived drugs tend to do? Also, can Proviron have any physical benefits for the physique? Uh, the only benefit you get from a DHT synthetic uh, is uh, looking drier. 
since there is no aromatization, provaron allegedly as an antigen may burn some fat in the long run. Um, well, I don't believe it gives you much strength and has, uh, I don't believe also DHT has benefits for the muscle gains. Uh, it improves, of course, the free testosterone. Now, through the free testosterone, perhaps if you increase your strength, then you could have some gains in the long run. I'm using 25 milligrams a year round. There's no uh, negative feedback on the lipids. Now, if you use 50, uh, you need more cardio to avoid uh, HDL reduction. Um, and uh, there's a zero liver toxicity. Now, listen, if your liver enzymes are up to 50, there's no substantial. I mean, this is not pharmaceutical hepatitis or there's some anemia. Over 50, yes, you can call it mild, but of course, it refers us to the CPK. But uh, go for one or two per barrel year round, to right, uh, as long as you don't abuse other drugs. So stack per barrel with testosterone all year round and uh, with no negative impact on the liver and the lipids. Oh, you know who I forgot to tell you? We, we, uh, Jose and I ran into Frank Seppi. He was at the show. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was looking good. Looking, He looks young. He looks so young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank is uh, 51. Uh, yeah, he lives in New York. Yeah, yeah. So Long Island, saying. I think so. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was good to see Frank. So next question. Would love to have Dr. T's opinion on using growth hormone every other day post-training. This was suggested to me by John Meadows a few years ago. Well, every other day, the only reason I can find is uh, economy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, I've said that GH, in order to burn fat effectively and in order to avoid the insulin resistance of GH, you need a low blood sugar level. So either first in the morning or post-workout. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why post-workout is a good um, environment with insulin sensitivity. You have burned your muscle glycogen. You are already fasted one or two hours before your workout as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, but comparing GH with IGF-1, it's preferable to use IGF-1 post-workout because it works like insulin as well, yeah. rather than using GH, you know? Um, but also, yes, it's, I mean, it has, um, it is reasonable, there is a point to use it for the sick of the insulin sensitivity post-workout and the fat burning. But listen, uh, you can inject GH post-workout. The point is that post-workout also, you're gonna need your carbs protein complex. Mm. So soon after, uh, you will favor hyperglycemia by, by uh, increasing your insulin through the uh, shape, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> You'd have to, if you wanted to get the fat burning benefits from the growth Listen, hormone. Finish, finish your workout with weights, inject yeah. your GHs and do also some heat afterwards or do some cardio a little bit. Okay. Okay, to favor the fat burning. Ah, I got you. So between, maybe between weights and hit some cardio. Exactly. Then you can have your shake with your protein and carbs. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Yeah. Got to make that clear. Here's a good one. For a low dose cycle of 300 milligrams per week, is it better to stack test and DECA or just take all test in terms of gains and side effects? You mean 150 of both? Yeah, I guess you would split it that way. So would you be well, better Well, 150 off? CRT... Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, dose. Now, 150 of DECA, yeah, well, uh, it's not, of course, serious anabolic, but uh, it's better than nothing, and it doesn't give you much water, water retention. Now, 300 from testosterone is not bad either, but the point is, you know, DECA is a decent anabolic also, so I guess you have two weapons instead of one. Uh, I would say that 150 of both in the long run may give you more benefits, you know? I mean, we always, we've talked for many years about the synergistic effects. That's why yes. people stack different compounds like that. But Listen, DECA is the best anabolic after Trembolone and Winstrol, the injectables, okay? Cause number three in anabolic activity. All right, so split them up, probably better than just 300 milligrams of cells. Curve. Well, the next one is also about DECA, Nandrolone. Is Nandrolone a renal toxic compound compared to DHT derivatives? When is the appropriate time to add in nandrolone? The in derivatives are not toxic. Completely not. I mean, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, Winstrol and Anavar are. I'm sorry. Yeah. And also Anadrol is a DHC derivative. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, DECA is not toxic. Not semi-inoculated. Okay. 
because those DHCD derivatives are 70 nucleated. Now, uh, allegedly in the long run, after decades, maybe there is um, a toxicity in the MRI and perhaps DECA is accompanied with uh, MRI lesions. I don't know. Well, turmoil is worse than that. Um, well, it's a project thing, you know, and it may have negative impact in your libido if you're not into TRT. Yeah. Uh, besides, DECA has not had major affinity for the CHBG, so it doesn't liberate much of free testosterone. But uh, you can tolerate 50 milligrams of DECA in your liver, in your lipids. No, yourself also, you're using one or 200 per week okay. of DECA. 100? Uh, yourself, right now, 200, 200. 200. But, but your liver enzymes are within range, huh? Well, I got to look at my blood work. I just got some results and I couldn't get my, I couldn't open it. They didn't actually post them like they were supposed to, but I'll tell you next time. Next time we can talk about it. I'll have, I thought yeah, I would because have now you get real stuff. Assuming that yeah. you were taking under those decker back in the days. Yeah, I think it was. But uh, yeah, right now it's it's from a farm, you know, Ron, pharmacy. I believe that I gave an interview in the newspaper uh, last week in uh, one of the newspapers in Greece. Uh, they were saying that, um, it's just the underground that give you um, side effects. And no, if you abuse even a pharmaceutical grade, you're going to get side effects as well. Yeah. But sometimes under, from the underground, uh, it's so messed up the materials inside that it may be faked also, heavy metals, no. Yeah. And underdose or overdose that sometimes uh, you get more side effects because of the, there's no legitimate stuff inside. Just like you use unofficial stuff. You just mentioned heavy metals. I mean, don't a lot of these underground... Compounds... You know, heavy metals can give you cancer. Yeah, like mercury. Yeah. Okay, mercury poisoning. He's a, yeah, I mean, that's scary stuff. Uh, Alzheimer also, yeah, mercury and Alzheimer's. Terrible. All right, next one is, what are the best supplements for lower back pain for bones and joints? Is shark cartilage better than chondroitin and glucosamine? What about PEDs with low side effects? I'm starting to add DECA on my HRT protocol because I hear all these bad things about it. Oh, he says, I'm sorry. He said, I'm scared to add DECA to my TRT, to my HRT protocol because I hear all these bad things about it. But I sometimes have really bad lower back pain. Could this also be from elevated estrogen? My estrogen was at 100 last time I checked, and now I'm on two milligrams of Arimidex a week. Can high estrogen give you bone issues? So, No, of course. Oh. High estrogens are protected from the bones. Wow. Listen, low back pain is so uh, generalized. If it's hernia, then definitely you need to be operated. Otherwise, you need physical therapy. Um, now, there's no reason to use DECA and testosterone if you don't have surgery. So post-surgery, it can speed up tissue healing like myself. Okay. And even myself, I had horrible pain walking for 30 minutes for the next three months after my surgery. Mm -hmm. And I was taking all the supplements of the world. So, uh, uh, highly card, I mean, sour cartilage, glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, uh, collagen, hyaluronic acid are just for the articular surface, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so, in such cases, if, if the vertebra slide into each other, yeah. um, it's a mechanical uh, stimulus that stretches the spinal cord, you know. Mm -hmm. So, it's not a classic uh, joint that articulates the one. Uh, surface to the eye, like the shoulder or the, or the knee joint, you know, it's very delicate. And why we have pain is because the nerves are, are compressed, you know, uh, and they give you this nasty cervical pain or through the spinal cord or like a current, like a, a, a electric current. Yeah. Um, so I believe uh, do physical therapy and uh, usually a Henry, I can be uh, self-treated and could be also covered by connective tissue uh, in the long run, you know, but if you want to speed up the healing and be side effects free and pain free, then if it's opera if it goes for an operation, go for it. Okay. All right, we got a great, this is a great question. We all knew, I'm old enough, you're old enough, Dolph Lundgren, he was Drago, in the rock, the rock, yeah. uh, four, and he's a big movie star back in the days in the Expendables movies more recently. A friend of Per Bernalos. yeah, he actually did a whole book with pictures of him and stuff. I remember, yeah, Per told me he called him and uh, uh, Dolph ensured him that he feels much better now 
with the alternative uh, treatment that he has. Yeah. Oh, cool. So let's get into it. There is a new documentary on YouTube about Dolph Lundgren and how steroids gave him cancer. I'm 40 years old on HRT for life, 250 to 300 milligrams of Sustanon underground uh, per week, split into two or three shots, 50 milligrams of DHEA per day, 1500 IU of HCG split into three shots per week. Sometimes I take a little bit of Masteron, 100, 200 milligrams a week or Proviron, 45 to 50 milligrams a day. Can this give me cancer later in life? I'm very scared after Dolph Lundgren's revealing he has been secretly battling lung cancer for eight years. Should I quit HRT? What are your thoughts? Well, lung cancer is the result of smoking. I would say environmental pollution, in case you have uh, genes for you know this kind of cancer. But usually the number one stimulus is smoking. I doubt now if Dolph was smoker, but uh, Thomas O'Connor asked, in Generation Iron uh, video about Dolph, what kind of cancer? And they said it was kidney, actually, with metastasis to, to, to the liver. So I don't know if it was lung, kidney, or liver eventually. Now, this guy is not using legitimate stuff. So Masterum and Sustain Underground may give you uh, disease in the long run because of the heavy metals. Allegedly. So go for legitimate testosterone, OK? And Screw the master because master is no is very hard to get even for bodybuilding, and of mm -hmm. course it's underground shit. Um, stick with Proviron, of course, and uh, I mean uh, I have no idea what kind of cancer. But yes, yeah, he, he was using uh, steroids. Now we know from uh, medicine that steroids can give you liver cancer in case of you abuse massive the pills. Yeah. All right. Prostate cancer rarely we we've seen. Now, Shawnee Schmidt also died out of cancer, but I don't remember what kind of cancer it was. But frankly, in the bodybuilding scene, uh, we rarely seen dying out of cancer. Right, right. Uh, unless there's a metastasis, you know. Uh, where, uh, Steve Reeves died of, of um, Hodgkin lymphoma, but I oh, guess... He's, uh, he's like 90 years old. <laughs> no, no, it was 78, actually, in 2000. Oh, 70? Okay. But usually, I mean, um, now, George Farah had the colonic cancer, I think so, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it could be the diet as well. It could be also a genetic uh, factor. Um, but we don't know for sure what what uh, the heck I mean, was wrong with Dolph. Um, I well, mean... Well, uh, let me ask you this. So he he's cancer very rarely. He's he's the one saying steroids gave him cancer. Where is it? Does he have any... No, he like suspects. He suspects. I don't know. He, mm -hmm. Allegedly, there's just a rumor. He's not sure mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Maybe he has some second thoughts and, and uh, you know, he feels guilty, but we don't know for sure. Come on. I mean, think about it. One in three, I, don't, I think this this is Was he using massively the pills? I don't know, but I'm saying... And this, if you use this in your youth, listen, the, the liver cancer develops, and then, I mean, you need a, a transplant. You cannot stop the pills in your 40s and develop cancer in your, in your 60s. It doesn't go like this. I'm just it's saying... It's really aggressive, the liver. If, so, I mean, cancer is very common. It's actually right behind. I looked up causes of death in the U.S., and cancer is not that far behind heart disease now. It's, it's prostate colonic in men, yeah. and lung also, out yeah. of smoking, out of diet, and prostate cancer in men is something, I wouldn't say inevitable, but it's very reasonable to happen. But it's a process of aging of men. If, if steroids gave you cancer, so many, we'd see a lot of bodybuilders dying of cancer. But we don't. I told you, we, we don't have many cases out of this. Yeah. So Very I, few cases died out of a cancer, you know? Because, I mean, remember uh, remember the football player Lyle Alzado many years ago? Lyle Alzado, yeah, he had a brain cancer. He but blamed, he was, according to Rick Wallace, he was using, uh, he had Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease. Maybe he was using for cadavers, uh, G8. But also, they say he was HIV positive. Man. And this was a secret, a, a, a secret you know. And this also could give you some uh, brain tumor as well. I mean, I, I'm not, I would never say steroids are harmless, but now, you know, a lot of people are going to hear Dolph Lundgren's claim and they're going to say, oh no, steroids give you cancer. Well, no, they don't give you cancer. Sorry to say. Anyway, move on. Here we go. Is it true that NPP, which is nandrolone phenylpropionate, the, the fast, faster acting version, doesn't have the same anti-inflammatory effects as DECA? It's not an inflammatory. It's just the, that it rushes 
fluid into the synovial cavity. And because it's a lung ester, the fluid remains there more because it kicks a luster. Mm. Okay. And the MPP clears your system like the propionate testosterone. Yeah. So the fluid retention is uh, less likely to, to happen because it clears your system in 40, 72 hours. Mm. So, okay. Okay. So the long lasting DECA, along with long lasting testosterone, are more likely to yeah. give you this pathiness that is also beneficial here. So, and it's true then. So, in, an NPP does not have the same joint. You know, no, it clears your system happens. and you use it, you know, uh, when you, you want to cut mm -hmm. because okay. it doesn't call your fluid retention. So, you're better off having fluid retention, guys, if you have achy joints. Yeah. So, just saying. And also, that's why we don't use an ease retention when we have cracky joints. We want this. Fluid rotation out of estrogens to lubricate over here. You mask the pain. It masks the pain. I mean, people. And this wish is tricky because if you push yourself, then you, you, you're gonna wear them out. Yeah. Winstrol is notorious for giving you creaky it joints. It cuts off aldosterone. That's why you look yeah. super dry. But yeah. if you have aldosterone, you don't have the fluid rotation. It hurts. All right. Next one is my husband, age 48, lifts regularly but never does cardio. He's on 100 milligrams a week, TRT, and no other PEDs. Good health has what you gentlemen call a beach boy physique. That's what you say all the time. My husband says Mike Mentzer said heavyweight training with short intervals is cardio. I say Mentzer died I've young. said that before. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, it kicks your heart rate, but there's no diastolic movement like when you're jogging. When you're jogging, the heart enlarges, you know, it's called diastole. And this is much better way than when you're into a gym and you force yourself to do short intervals, okay? So the remodeling of the heart with larger ventricles that pump efficiently comes only with cardio output, you know? It's your VO2 max, your body's ability to process oxygen, to get the oxygen. VO2 max is the ability to, con to cons the consumption of oxygen, okay? Yeah. But in order to, um, your heart to be fitness, you know, you have a fitness heart, you need jogging, jogging, you know? Cardio, yeah. Swimming, not, not necessarily uh, jogging or walking. Swimming, also you can do that. Or dancing, you know, you need a regular activity with diastolic movement of the heart. Right. All right, so let's finish this question. Uh, I think that was almost it. So, yeah, we realized that Mike Benzer did die young. He was 49. How much and what type of cardio is optimal? Both of us will respect and 70 follow. 70 percent is good, but if you wanna have a better cardiovascular um, ability and a respiratory capacity, you, you need to go to 80, 90 percent. So 60 to 70 is low pace to burn some fat. Also elevate the HDL, do some collateral circulation. If you wanna be super fit, you have to go to go heat style. 80, 90, and then go back to 60, 70, you know, those intervals. You actually looked, I found this online last week from uh, the Mayo Clinic or something. Uh, after the age of 70, especially, your your VO2 max is a good predictor of how long you're going to live. People with good cardio fitness live much longer on average than people who don't. I guess yeah, and this under COVID, apart from the muscles that you need them, also you need a good heart, you know, to... To be able to survive in the ICU. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we said heart disease is still the number one killer, I think, all over the world. It's uh, most most people, especially most men, die. So and this is the problem with bodybuilders. They uh, stimulate, I mean, too much the skeletal muscle. And the most important muscle is the heart. Yeah. And that's why like you see color. Arnold now doing bicycle all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of bodybuilders that retire, they, they get their cardio fitness much higher level and they tell they always tell me i feel so good i feel so much better you know they drop 20 30 40 pounds and they have really good cardiovascular fitness you know you don't have problem taking the stirs short of breath things like that when well, you're having sex also it's true that's true yeah you don't want to stop uh, i'm tired okay here we go next one what are dr t's thoughts on cialis's ability to lower estradiol I have no idea about that. I mean, I've never heard you have either. lower blood pressure, but lower estradiol, how is this possible to be effective on the hormonal system? I don't think so. I have a clue, I'm sorry. Yeah, I never heard about that. Okay, next one. Doc, why when I drink Vitargo, which is an old carb powder, 
with my BCA during training after I get low blood sugar all the time? Because Vitargo has uh, a lot of carbs. Mm. It increases your blood glucose, and then your insulin, your pancreas has to lower this. Mm. So I guess you measure this a little bit after when it's peaking. Like candy, you know, little kids, they get hyperactive, they get really energetic when you give them candy. But then, yeah, like but now, after, like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Crash. Yeah, I mean, we've all, you've had a big meal at a, at all of us bodybuilders have had the experience having a huge meal with a lot of carbs. And then, like an hour later, you just want to lay down and go to sleep. Just, yeah, oh. you feel lethargic, huh? 100%. Okay, next one is two milligrams of Arimidex a week harmful? Will it affect my lipids? How about other health? Health issues. How long can I stay on it? I'm on HRT. Well, I guess two milligram of Arimidex goes with a half a gram of testosterone. Oh, so a half a gram of testosterone plus two milligrams of Arimidex, they will lower your HDL. Mm. They will. Yeah. But I mean, two milligrams is a lot, isn't it? I think I'm on. Five per week? Grams. Well, I mean, yeah. when you're bulking in a cycle, you use three milligrams at least Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. But definitely your HDL will go down five digits. Yeah, fair enough. Well, HDL is a good one, guys, just so you know. All right. Last question. Bromocryptine versus cabergoline. Which one is safer? Which one can I run all year round without side effects? All year round? Why all year round? Unless you stay up all night and you're a dormant or a bouncer, you don't need to control your prolactin and be paranoid. Because I've seen people that start in DECA and use out of blind uh, you know, results, they use scabrigly and then they have prolactin one or two, you feel also crap. Mm. So always work with evidence. Why all year round? I mean, always do a lab work and see the results. Yeah. Um, so prolactin could be between 10 and 15 the most, but it shouldn't be below 10 or below five, for instance. Um, I never use Parlader or Bromocryptine in Greece, we have the dust next. And uh, when people come with China uh, symptoms, I tell them to, to measure E2, prolactin, and DHT, all right? And also the testosterone, because it matters also, apart from the estradiol, how much is the testosterone? So I tell them, either you use Nolvadex for gyno already established, okay? This will occupy the receptor. Then you can use also Proviron that has an antigenic effect if the DHT is low. You can use dust neck is prolactin is high. You can use also index is super high for dial with moderate testosterone. Okay, but not uh, uh, all year round. This is crazy. Well, let me finish. Here's the rest of his question. He says, "I took Haber cabergoline a while ago, but had palpitations. I guess it means heart palpitations. I heard it was serious side effects on the heart. It can remodel it and also can damage Why your you valve." Why like you take also steroids along with it because steroids also might give you. Heart arrhythmia. Mm, so yeah, uh, it's not a, a, a monotherapy of cabergoline, okay? Mm. If you start if you stack it with steroids, okay. Does, does cabergoline have a reputation for doing any kind of heart damage? Well, I've I've heard that it also affects the uh the valves of the heart. But listen, people who take cabergoline for sure, unless you don't have platinoma, yeah, uh, they're stacking it with steroids. The steroids also take you to heart arrhythmia. So Apart from steroids, you may take also if you work out, also give you heart rate. Yeah, so, <laughs> to, to have a sure, to be sure out of it that Cabergoli gives you palpitations, just use it by itself. You know, mm -hmm. do not stack it with other compounds like the cycle. So, you also it, want it, it may also give you, but not for life uh, or year round. This is crazy. Uh, does bromo, he wondered, does bromocryptine have these side effects on heart? Or I have no organs? idea. You can read the paper inside. You know, you can go to Google and see the side effects. But in Greece, we don't have this. Uh, I've seen two anabolics uh, book, the bromocryptine, the parallel. Hmm. But most people use the prolactin. And but this he is also what I said, He's thinking about giving bromocryptine to his girlfriend because she has high prolactin. My God, don't touch this. I mean, women should have prolactin. Come on. Okay. Then you know that women, when like, they lactate, they have a levated prolactin. Come on, don't treat your girlfriend like yourself. Isn't that what prolactin is oh for? My God. To, make you, to make you lactate? It's like yeah. telling me uh, my, my girlfriend has high sedal, we should pass. Come on. Well, if she's trying to be Ms. Olympia, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's all the questions for this week, Doctor. we got a bunch of them. Oof. I've seen Sergio Olivia improving so bad. So bad. And is there any problem for him getting the visa? Ah, he should have been at that New York Pro. 
I mean, with all due respect to everyone else, I think he would have he would have won that and he would have looked phenomenal. And I don't know what's going on. I see that he I see him training every day. He looks like he's ready to get on stage over in there in uh, Dubai. That's in California, bro. Yeah, maybe he can get to California. And then there's Toronto the week after that. We got three shows, three weekends in a row. So I think Cali's gonna be a lot of the same people from New York Pro with a couple other couple newer ones. We'll see. The list comes out. It's very far from Dubai to Cali. You know, it's around 20 hours too. Yeah, they do have a pro show in Dubai, I think. I don't know if they always have one, but if they have one but this is year. Is it before the Olympia? I don't know. October. I hope so. I hope so, because Olympia is November 7th. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario. But if he can't get out of Dubai to compete, oh he could. Why are you staying there if he cannot get out? Of no, I mean, I don't know if he can get out, but I'm just saying if he can't get out of Dubai, there would be no point in him qualifying for the Olympia if he can't get to the Olympia. But. You know, I'm hoping everything's sorted out. I know he had the issue with the car accident, but, you know, I hope that's cleared I mean, up. It was, it was, I mean, uh, with the insurance, it was uh, settled, you know. It was... Yeah, I thought it was all set. We'll see. Yeah, it's – Sergio, we need you back on stage, man. We really need to see you. top five is on the come on. He's a monster. He should be. He should be top five Olympia every year by now at this point. He's, he's that good. So, hopefully he will get there. Hopefully, yeah. Anyway – Doctor, thank you so much once again taking the time to share your knowledge and expertise with these people around the world who really, really need it. Again, guys, go to Amazon and pick up the book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2. By the way, Don Solomon said that the VIP Olympia tickets from the day are out. What do you say? They're sold out already? No, they're oh. they, they they're open on up. sale. Yeah, the okay. sales. So maybe they'll be sold out like by next week. Yeah, they sell up, they sell up pretty quick, usually within a month. You know, I, I got a special uh, invitation. I mean, I paid it, of course, but Dan offered me a golden one. Uh, I mean, it was August, last August, you know, so it was expired, even though they were already expired anyway. And then he gave me a certificate. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Dan was at the show. I saw him for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised how many people went. There was. Uh, he was the head judge. Eh? No, Steve was not the head judge. It was uh, wow. Tyler Mannion. Yeah, Steve doesn't judge his own shows. He was a promoter. So he was walking around making sure everything went everything so was Tyler was a judge also. Tyler's all he's he's a head judge at a lot of these shows. Really? Usually, yeah. There's only like four guys that are head judges. How old is Tyler? 30? No, he's uh he's my daughter's age. He's 20. So my daughter's 29. I think he's the same age as my daughter. But he's been judging since he was like 19. Really? Yeah. I remember seeing him years ago. I'm like, this is crazy. He's like a teenage kid up on the judging panel. It's like it looks like father with the headshots in the, the Coleman's here. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Jim, Jim was there. Jim Mannion. He's probably about eighty years old now. Jim still looks great. Still walks around sharp as a tack. Yeah, that's the Godfather. He, he, uh, I mean, uh, Blackman was other. Right? Who's that? Steve Blackman. No, Steve didn't go. Huh. No, Steve hasn't gone to one of the New York Pro in a couple of years. But uh, yeah, a lot of people. A lot of I end up. I always end up missing people. I see their pictures like the next day. I'm like, ah, like Rick Collins. I would have loved to say hi to Rick, but I missed him completely. Oh well. Anyway, that's it, guys. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, turn your notifications on here on the bell and on your telephone. Telephone, very important. I say telephone. That's it. We appreciate you guys watching and leave your comments, questions for next week's show below here in the comments. We love your feedback. We appreciate you watching. This has been another episode of Ask Dr. Testosterone with Dr. George Tuliados. We'll see you next time. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.